All right, we are back, and we are going to continue our conversation as I turn Mike's mic off so Mike can put it on his head and then turn it back on so it doesn't make that noise we just heard. <laughs> and uh, uh, and I have the, uh, the Eye of Sauron watching Steve hello, right now you? as he brings us back Welcome into to Grog the program. <clears throat> we are your feared extremist, right-wing, heart-charging, gun-toting, opinionated, outspoken, rabble-rousing, letter-writing, radio microphone stomping conservatives and rational libertarians. I actually got it all out in one breath. Thank you very much. But we're going to talk to Eileen, and she just brought up an interesting subject in the break, and we want to go there. Uh, sure. Health care. Absolutely. Healthcare, healthcare. Well, we, we all know that New Hampshire has some of the highest rates in the nation of healthcare. And so that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a hindrance to businesses and that's a hindrance to just population in general. So what we've seen come through, we've got a bunch of hospitals, I think it's 10 that's, that are not on the list of, of, of being provider hospitals. So what are those hospitals going to do? Um, and with the patients. So I run a medical practice part-time. I'm not the doc, but I do everything I possibly can so the doc can be the doc star. And uh, make sure every, every, everything else stays in place. And we've had patients that we've, they've been stable on a medication for four or five years, and now they can't get it. They need a prior authorization. And then it's jumping through hoops and providing enough paperwork. And sometimes it's, it's taken a couple of days. So a person's have to do without or some substitute that, we, that, that hasn't worked for them in the past, just at least there's, there's something that gives mm-hmm. them some degree of relief or, or whatever, whatever they're needing. And so that's, it's really negatively impacted patient quality of life and quality of, of our ability to care for our patients in the way that we've seen it work for them. So it's, it's very frustrating from us as, as practitioners to, to manage patient care that way. And so we're, we're, um, I have a very dear friend of mine who has breast cancer. She's a breast cancer survivor. And her insurance coverage, being able to go down to Dana-Farber, you know, you've got state-of-the-art, um, world-class cancer care right right over the border here. And um, on the new plan, she wouldn't be able to leave the state. And so she was lucky enough to find the right surgeon and the right pathologist, and they caught it. And, and with, the, with all the numbers she had, she should not be here now. I mean, she should not be here. And had she not had that opportunity to go down to the state-of-the-art um, facilities that we and have we don't there hear, and covered. We don't hear that in the press. We don't hear about how no. all the Boston hospitals are cut off now. Yes, yes. And so when when you have you know children that have special special issues going on, that we just can't fill that need here in the state. Uh, and, I, and, I, and or even even the simple thing is, if we wanted to send somebody up north to, to Lebanon to Dartmouth Hitchcock, there's there's sometimes a three or four month waiting period. Right. And, and, let, and let, that's, yeah, that's, let me let me yeah, give you another example. That care? I mean, Boston is the biggest city in the region, and it's got mm-hmm. stuff that New Hampshire doesn't have, and economically, New Hampshire cannot have. Understood. A- and you know, one of those is the Mass Eye and Ear uh, yes. Hospital, which is mm-hmm. one of the most fabulous research centers and centers for uh, very creative reconstructive and repair surgery of eyes, of ears, mm-hmm. of of other uh, you know parts of the head that. Uh, you know, allow people to put their lives back together, allow children born with deformities mm-hmm. to lead, lead normal lives. And it's an amazing thing. And it, the last few years, some uh, friends of ours who are sponsors and organizers of their annual fundraiser have kindly invited us. And uh, and also um, the other grandmother, as I call her, the, uh, <laughs> the other grandmother of, our, of two of our grandkids. And this year, one of our grandkids is coming as well. And, they're, they're, you know, she's a customer, uh, you know, of, of the uh, of Mass Eye and Ear. And it, it, so it's the most amazing yeah. or, if, organization. And like you said, uh, you know, Obamacare deliberately fragments and constrains. Oh. You can't get there from here, no. uh, which is a favorite New England saying, you can't get yeah. there from here. Uh, and they've made it that way. Uh, and Democrats have been working to restrict our choices for more than 10 years now. And Shaheen's been at the forefront of that. I'm sorry, I, well, I want to no, no, that's the, you're, you're on a rant and I'm, I'm right there with you because it, it, it is. It's we've, we've gotten to a place where we just, we can't, you know, quality. How do you get quality health care? So um, what, do, how we, do, you get what do we do in New Hampshire? What do you think? What's so our, what's so one, one of the things to, is to is, is um, reducing regulation. We have some of the, the highest regulations and mandates in the insurance industry here in our state. And so it's reducing some of those, like bariatric surgery. Um, I, I mean, in a perfect world, you'd, you'd be able to have something like a la carte health care. So where if, you know, you're, I, uh, well, <clears throat> I don't want to say how old I am, but I'm an older woman. <laughs> and, and so I'm not necessarily thinking of maternity care, and that's not something that would be present for me. And so to, to, for me to have to purchase cover, coverage for something that I know that I'm not going to need or for uh, you know, a single male to have to, to mm-hmm. purchase those kinds of things, um, a la carte would really be a, a good solution for, for many, many people. But we don't have that here, and I don't, we don't have the option now with the, the Affordable Health Care Act. Would you, um, I, I push this every chance I get. In fact, this is the third time I think I've mentioned it today. I think that the state of New Hampshire, with a 
strong governor and legislature could do that. Just tell the government, you know, you don't have that power and we're not going to let you have it. We're going to do it our own way. I, I, well, I, th I think that's actually perfectly feasible because, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, even the legislation as written, which is why Obama feels he has to keep tinkering with it, says that if the state chooses not to establish an exchange, A, the federal government may set up its own, mm -hmm. B, they cannot penalize or, uh, or tax the employers to pay for those benefits, and B, they don't have the power to dish out those benefits. So in other words, the state can simply say, hell no. And a couple of the Midwestern states are actually suing the federal government right now, saying, we already said hell no, leave our people alone. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's being able to draw that line and just say, no, no, you're not going to cross it. We're not going to let you do this to our state. Because okay. our, our, our people are too important for that. They are. And what else? What else? What oh. priorities? What priorities? Um, so we've got jobs in the economy that needs to grow. We've got health care um, taxes. So no, there's no, 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 no broad-based taxes. No, um, and I would, I would make sure that I would fight for anything that's going to lead us in the direction, s such as the Medicaid expansion that we just saw, that that's, that's brought us to the brink. Of, that's something that, that as a state senator you yeah. would have to help fix. Yes. Thoughts? That would be that would be on the top of the list. Yeah. Well, it's it's there's no easy fix to that now that it's been done. I mean, it does have a, have an ability to sunset. So how do you what is the solution that you have to that? It's it's looking for the options that are out there. I don't have I don't have the answer for you now. Um, I would be sure that I would have the answer once I walked in the door. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. You 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 have to come up with an arrangement by which it can sunset. And yes. I'm, I'm going to quote one of our gubernatorial candidates here who says the the pledge. Not to have a broad-based tax is puffery without, and, and, and most people mm -hmm. didn't quote the rest of it, without the policies that enable that to be the case. In other words, you've got yes. to cut the spending or control the spending, otherwise you will inevitably have what the Democrats want, a broad-based tax. Oh, oh, exactly. And so it's, it's ensuring that you're not voting for something that's going to lead us down that path. And as I, as I, the good analogy I like to say is it's, you know, there's the cookie here or the extra donut this day or, oh, well, it's a birthday. I'll have that extra piece of cake and ice cream. And by the end of the year, you're wondering why your pants don't fit when you're, you know, looking for the winter <laughs> pants. And, and you're like, well, how did that happen? Well, it's, it's, it's little bits and pieces. And that's what we've seen happen over the years is that we've, we've gone from this, you know, live for your die, this, this state that has this great New Hampshire advantage. And we've seen that new, that advantage go from like this down to here. And, and so we're right at the, we're right at the precipice. And this, this election cycle is extremely important. You, people might not really be president, not a presidential year. Should I really show up? Yes, we really need you to come out because this is the year that, you know, Republicans need to do very strong. And that sets us up for 2016. We need to, we need to be sure that we are headed in the right direction. Because um, if we're not, 2016 could be really ugly. And then it just, it, it is, is this is it snowballed too large for us to be able to stop it? Right think, now, I think it is. Uh, my, uh, we've already talked about I think what all the solutions are, and that is of course making the the environment more business friendly. Exactly. Because if you have employed people, you don't need Medicaid expansion because exactly. they have jobs and insurance and they can pay for their own things. If we had something like an a la carte health care system, you would have options. People wouldn't, I wouldn't have to pay for maternity care. I wouldn't have to, you know, all these things that are added into the cost, you, they wouldn't be there. You know, mm -hmm. um, Josh was just here. He's running for the house from Merrimack. He doesn't have insurance because he's young and healthy and he chooses not to have it. And, uh, you know, if he had options for, uh, you know, coverage, that was inexpensive in case he got in an accident or something happened to him, he would probably embrace that, you know, even though he would probably never use it. But we don't have those choices. And I think no. those choices in combination with a much better business philosophy as far as taxes and fees and regulations goes is really the cure to the Medicaid expansion problem. Yes. Yes. You know, that's, that's, that, that is, again, being able to grow the economy and find good paying jobs with benefits. And that's right. being if, able to bring those here. It's, it's 90,000 people cross the border every morning to go to Massachusetts. So yeah. it's not only impacting their quality of life. You know, if you had an extra two hours a day where you're not sitting in your car, you know, what could you do with that? Maybe have breakfast with your kids or, as I said, you know, go to, go to Sally's Ballet, you know, practice mm -hmm. or, or football practice or actually be coach for, for one of your kids. And so it's not just that it's the time. And it's the money, and you're paying taxes to Massachusetts. So let's find some jobs here so people can increase their quality of life and be able to stay in the state and spend uh, the revenues that they would um, are otherwise spending in taxes to Massachusetts and spend those dollars here on our local economy. I think that would be really nice. Yeah, so that was one of the things I, when they keep talking about that commuter rail down to Boston. I'm like, so you want to make it easier for people to leave the state? I, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it makes oh, good sense to go. me. I, is... I, would, I, would, I would love for it to, to be able to make it easier for people from Massachusetts to come here. 
But uh, you know, we're, t- we're talking about restraining government spending Got and the minute, growth so. of government spending. And I just want to wave this in front of the, the camera, the Democrat spending Eileen. trend line. Um, the budget as it was going up under Lynch, the budget as it was restrained under O'Brien, as it began to creep up over Maggie Hassan and the request for the next biennium, which I've labeled Hassan on fire. Show, show oh, well, no. So, so this is this is absolutely absurd. So it's like me going and just going, OK, I'm going to go for a spending spree. I'm just going to go on vacation here. I'm going to vacation. I'm not going to even pay attention to where the money's going and then going, oh, I have overspent by way too much, like maybe a whole month's worth of income. How do I get that? So I'm going to walk over to my boss and say, you know what? I kind of overspent and I really need you to give me an 18% raise next year because I know I'm going to spend that much next year because I really had fun on my vacation. And your boss is going to look at you and go, um, no, I don't think so, Eileen. I don't think that's going to be the case. And that's exactly what's happened. So they've overspent. There's not transparency either. That would be one of the first things that I would really work hard on mm-hmm. is is having transparency because they're your tax dollars. They're coming out of your pocket, your hard-earned money. The hard-earned families of the Granite State, their tax dollars are coming out. And if they can't show you where that money's going, you need to be worried. And so if if the governor didn't even know where those funds were going and all of a sudden this was a surprise to her, that's the kind of surprise that that, that shouldn't be happening. So, So transparency at all levels so that we can be... Somebody could be the watchdog for where that bunny's going. We've got about 30 seconds. How do people reach you? Okay, please go to my website at Landy's. That's L A N D I E S N H four number four N H dot com. Sorry, Landy's for New Hampshire dot com. My cell phone number is 603-714-5185. I really need people to show up. I need people, I need volunteers donations to my campaign, um, sign locations. So please, please reach out to me. Give me a phone call. Hop on my email. And um, I really want to serve the Granite State. And if you want to light a fire under Lou D'Alessandro, yes. this is the lady to do it. This, Go I, vote. <laughs> I, I had some, some individual who's, who's in the press I won't name and said, you know, I don't necessarily always agree with you, but I know that if you got into the State House, you would be a force to be reckoned with. And I went, thank you very much. A force <laughs> of nature. That is what we need. Yes. That is what we need. Eileen, thank you so much thank for spending you. some time with us today. My name is Steve McDonald here with Mike Rogers. Skip Murphy is at home monitoring us from a distance, but he'll be back next week. For more news, information, and more Grok Talk. Yeah, man, I'll tell you what, that dang old internet, man, you just go on there and point and click, 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 click. It's real easy, man. Yeah, baby! When asked whether she still supports Obamacare, Senator Jean Shaheen said, Yes, I do continue to support the law. We're beginning to see some positive results. How can Senator Shaheen say we're seeing positive results when 22,000 of our neighbors have already lost their health insurance? What's worse, the Boston Globe reports the state's only health insurance provider radically reduced the number of hospitals in their network, forcing some people to drive over an hour for lab work, even when there's a hospital within a few miles of their home. When pressed about lack of access, Shaheen said, There are some hospitals that are not covered, unfortunately, and um, I I certainly hope that's going to change. Jean Shaheen promised us we could keep our doctors and our health care coverage. Now she hopes we can get to a local hospital? Call Senator Shaheen at 603-647-7500. Tell her we need more than hope. We need leadership. Paid for by Citizens for a Strong New Hampshire. Senator Jean Shaheen said, if you like your current health plan, you can keep it. That's not true, Senator. 22,000 New Hampshire citizens have been kicked off their insurance plans. Hospitals in Rochester, Concord, and Portsmouth, they aren't allowed to provide care under the exchange. Senator, you were wrong in your comments. You should apologize for your misleading remarks. I'm calling Senator Shaheen at 750-3004 and telling her I want my doctor back. You should, too. Paid for by SaberPack.org, not authorized by any candidate or candidate committee. All of the music on this program comes to us through Creative Commons licensing from Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the speakers, not necessarily those of CNHT, GraniteRock.com, or anyone else for that matter.